Stop using medical devices for LASIK. This is a simulation of the vision in my left eye. LASIK ruined my vision and my quality of life. Not all 2020 is the same. I chart at the bottom here shows what doctors say is a good LASIK outcome versus normal vision. LASIK often causes even more vision quality loss, which is very important. Partial lists of my LASIK complications include microkeratome failure, blade reuse, scar, etc. The FDA state safety was determined with a risk-benefit analysis, but where is it? Make the formal risk-benefit analyses public. The risks of cutting a flap for LASIK far outweigh the benefits. Quality of vision and dry eye risks were not evaluated. I believe no risk-benefit analysis was actually done, and the FDA will not compare the safety of these dangerous devices to any alternative like contacts. What value was put on human injury and suffering in the FDA's analysis? Clinical trials are not FDA risk-benefit analyses. Devices approved for LASIK are not safe because cutting a flap for LASIK is not safe. Compared to glasses or contacts, there's no way the benefits of LASIK outweigh the severe risks of permanent injury for life. A failure rate of 5% or higher is not safe, and the post-market standard of care for LASIK is not safe. LASIK surgeons lied to me and other patients over and over. Why aren't doctors reporting the truth to the public? If the FDA followed federal law, lives can be saved. Regarding the FDA not taking any action to regulate LASIK centers as ASFs under FDR Regulation 21 CFR Part 803, LASIK surgery centers meet the device user facility definition as an ambulatory surgical facility, or ASF. CFR 803 requires the FDA to regulate LASIK centers, including their reporting and written procedures. What has the FDA done to inspect any LASIK facility for written procedures or for not making reports to the FDA to assure that each LASIK center follows the ASF procedures, like maintaining files and reporting? Will the FDA explain how they know these LASIK ASFs are complying? Probably not. What FDA surveillance program confirms that LASIK ASFs are reporting adverse events that occur in the ASFs to the FDA? Disclosing FDA in action in this public forum is shocking. I'm skeptical about the ability of the FDA CDRH to explain or defend its performance in public. I would not be surprised to learn that few, if any, of these ASF centers meet the requirements. LASIK is a surgery done on millions of people. MDR regulation appearing in 21 CFR 803 defines device user facility includes ASFs. I believe this encompasses LASIK centers. The types of adverse events and serious injuries LASIK victims suffer from must be reported by the ASFs to the FDA. Annual reporting of MDR events can be submitted on FDA Form 3419. Publicize the FDA's lack of action, please. If my suspicion is correct, the FDA has been intentionally negligent in the discharge of its responsibility to assure compliance with the regulations. Why have there been so few adverse event reports to the FDA despite numerous consumer reports? By statute, ASFs are required under penalty of law to report device malfunctions. The reporting requirements re apply regardless of clearance and approval. I presented the FDA with evidence of unreported adverse events, but the FDA did nothing. Regarding bias in the LASIK quality of life study, the AAO and NEI should be involved, but ASCRI's involvement represents an obvious conflict of interest. Researchers should not already have drawn a conclusion about quality of life in LASIK, not have a financial interest in LASIK or bias, yet Askers has already announced three LASIK surgeons for the study. Regarding bias in the LASIK quality of life study, the FDA knows there is a study showing a connection between LASIK and suicide. Emory University. The significant correlation between these two separate events connects them. The medical community should know that LASIK patients may be committing suicide at four times the expected rate. That's huge. LASIK surgeon Dr. Richard Lindstrom has financial interests in the device manufacturers or the procedure, has already drawn his conclusion about quality of life after LASIK. Having already stated his bias, I believe he should not be allowed to design and conduct a post-LASIK study in connection with the FDA's post-market review of LASIK. I asked this panel and the FDA after submitting four petitions, one, to redo the FDA risk-benefit analysis for LASIK. Report the serious nature of post-market LASIK risks. Include all the post-market risks like vision quality problems and dry eye. We don't do anything to the microkeratome in between eyes, say the doctors. Two, for the FDA to regulate LASIK centers as ASFs under existing FDA MDR regulations. LASIK surgery centers meet the device user facility definition as an ASF. For the quality of life study to be use qualified professionals who are completely independent of the LASIK industry, and four, a moratorium on the devices used for LASIK because LASIK surgery is far too risky and the research was not ethically done. Five, evaluate potential LASIK dry eye treatments like unscented natural body butter at Mercola.com. 
six stop LASIK. Dr. Huang emailed me that there were 12 uh, patients with a single microkeratone blade reused. Dr. Huang is sitting on this panel. We do not need your expertise. We do not need your conflicts of interest. Say no to LASIK surgeons sitting on any FDA panel evaluating devices used for LASIK. Three and a half percent had severe ghosting, right? Look.